Hello and welcome to Dateline Lagos on Channels Television. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun and compliments of the season. On this week's edition, Governor Samuelu presents 2.2 trillion Naira budget for the year 2024. State government assures of equitable access to quality healthcare services. State government deploy EGIS tools for effective land administration. And Governor Samuelu promises Lagosians healthcare palliatives. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Samwalu, has presented a 2.2 trillion Naira appropriation bill to the House of Assembly as proposed budget for the 2024 fiscal year. Take a look. It's that time of the year when the Lagos State House of Assembly receives guests who have come to witness the 2024 budget presentation ceremony. Governor Babajide Samwalu makes his way into the chamber to present the first budget under his second term administration. He takes time to reel out what has been achieved in the last four years under the theme's agenda. It's a great sense of duty that I stand before you here today to present the year 2024 appropriation bill, which will be the first full year budget since the inception of our administration for our second four year tenure in office. My appreciation goes to the thanks Lagos State House of Assembly under the dedicated leadership of Right Honorable Dr. Mudashu Ajayi Opasa for your unwavering commitment to our collective aspiration for a greater Lagos. As you progress on the second term journey, I look forward to your continued cooperation and collaboration to enable us to meet the yearnings of the people of Lagos. Lagos continues to attract huge investment that are creating jobs, contributing wages, and transforming local communities. This year alone, we have seen the completion and commissioning of the following, of the following major projects. The Lekki Deep Sea Port, which is the deepest deep sea port in the whole of South Saharan Africa. The largest single train crude oil refinery in the world, which a few days ago we all witnessed the first shipment of its crude for processing. The Lagos rice mill, 32 metric ton, the largest in South Saharan Africa. The commencement of operation of the phase one of the blue light. The new assembly plants are among some of the towering investment that we have commissioned in the course of this year. We are partnering with the private sector also to establish here in Lagos, Africa's premier international financial center. Our free zones are attracting new domestic and international companies who are battling on the premise and the potential of the new Nigeria. Under the transportation and traffic management pillar, Mr. Speaker, honorable members of the House, our driving vision here is to bequeath to Lagosians a truly, truly intermodal system of transportation like all flourishing mega cities around the world, a system that is seamless, that, in, that interconnects various modes of transportation. In our case, we are connecting road, rail, and water transportation. We are already on our way to achieving this. We are also expanding on all of these various systems. Our Blue Line Rail, which has since commenced operation, and which we get Thank the former president, President Buhari, for helping us to commission early this year. Kicked off with just 12 trips per day. Today, that rail line is doing 52 trips per day, and we're hoping that by early next year, it will move up to 70 trips per day. The red line, which is 100% investment in this administration, is now 96% completion, and will be commissioned by the grace of God by Mr. President Bola Hamed Chinubu, GCFR, within the next couple of months, within the first quarter of next year. We have also done extensive feasibility and viability studies on the potential green line, the yellow line, and the purple line. 
We have also extended our conversation on the new project called Omieko, which is a cycle $410 billion euro AFE funded water waste project that will further enhance our water transportation infrastructure and have a large fleet of new and modern electric ferries into our waterways. In road transportation, Lamata has recently taken delivery of the first set of electric mass time trains transit buses. This is in addition to our joint develop de deployment of over 800 buses across the 25 routes that are being run by Lagos Bus Service Limited and the first set of our 800 buses under the uh, Lagos Bus Service System and the 500 large and post mile buses which were all provided to the private sector. We also concluded plans to introduce additional 1,000 CNG buses into the public transportation system within the next couple of months. In the year 2020, we began constructing four bridges overpasses across the red line infrastructure between Oingo and Ikeja to serve as alternative routes for vehicular and pedestrian users in Oingo, Yaba, Suriliri, Mushi, and Ikeja, thus bringing relief to our various commuters. In the last four years, we have completed, commissioned, and handed over over 91 routes projects and several improved junctions, whilst we have 140 routes at various levels of completion. No part of Lagos has been left on top. Governor Sawalu says the 2024 proposed appropriation bill will help address the basic needs of the people. Mr. Speaker, I'm really privileged to present to you today the 2024 project proposal tax budget for renewal. The year 2024 budget is proposed to have a total budget size of 2 trillion 246.2 billion naira, and it's 2.2 trillion, comprising a total revenue of 1.847 trillion and a deficit financing of 398 billion. The total revenue comprises our internally generated revenue and total federal transfers as follows. For internet generated, propose a total of 1.2 trillion, and for total federal transfers, 596 billion. We equally propose a recurrent expenditure of 1.02 trillion, which comprises of total overhead, total personnel costs, and recurrent debt service broken down as follows. Total overhead costs, 527.7 billion. This is made up of overhead, 304.7 billion. Subvention, 123.01 billion. Dedicated funds amounting to 100.02 billion. Personnel costs amounting to 319.23 billion. Recurrent debt service at 174.94 billion. For capital expenditure, we propose a total of 1.224 trillion. As follows, capital expenditure, 856.38 billion, repayment, 367.89 billion. Mr. Speaker, members of, honorable members of this esteemed house, I also hereby give you further breakdown at sectoral level of the budget. The economic affairs, which is the largest stone, will have a total of 535 billion. Environment will have a total of 94 billion. Health will have 100, 156 billion. Education, about 199 billion. Social protection, 50 billion. Public order and safety, about 84 billion. To the good people of Lagos, I'm eternally grateful for the opportunity and privilege to serve once again. I would like to assure you that we will intensify the pace of our work in the days ahead and to add value, quality value to your life. Please continue to support us by obeying the laws of the life.
by paying your tax properly and in full, by exercising vigilance and providing useful information that will help tackle the activities of criminals. If you see something, please say something. The Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Mudashiro Basa, says the budget must be tailored towards improving the lives of residents. I would like to extend my appreciation to Governor Babadidio Sangolu for his diligent efforts in presenting the year's 2024 budget to the budget of renewal, with total estimates of over 2 trillion naira for the prosperous state of Lagos. This budget indicates its commitment to the growth and development of our dear state. It is worth noting that this budget is the first one for Mr. Government since the renewal of his mandate earlier this year. This translates to new expectations, new requests, new aspirations from the people of Lagos. As Lagosians look forward to the year 2024, the Lagos State Government is assured of palliatives in the area of transportation food provision to help reduce the effect of high inflation on the people. From budget presentation to universal health coverage, this time the Lagos State Government has again reassured residents of providing equitable access to quality health care through the Eco-Social Health Alliance Initiative of the State Health Management Agency. This was echoed at the Ecosha Fund raising event held at the Ebony Life Place in Victoria Island, Lagos. The Lagos State Health Management Agency has continued to take charge of its responsibility by ensuring that residents take advantage of the Lera Eco Health Insurance Package to receive subsidized health care services. The Ecosha Community Initiative designed for the vulnerable residents in a bid to enhance universal health coverage has impacted thousands of lives in the state. The Eco Social Health Alliance has equipped children with skills and knowledge, and the Secretary to the State Government assures people of more investment in the health sector. We promised you to ensure better livability for all. To demonstrate our commitment to the development of the health sector, I mean our further commitment, and making our service accessible to the people of Lagos State, we have invested in the infrastructural development of our public health facilities. We have continuously done this to quite a number of our facilities. And these have been remodeled and upgraded while plans are underway to build additional primary health centers. The chairman of Lashma commends donor partners for supporting the scheme since inception. The Eco Social Health Alliance, Ecosha, is, a, is an innovative resource mobilization uh, arm of the LASHMA agency, which was established to augment the government support for the vulnerable among us and the indigenous residents towards achieving a universal health coverage. The Ecosha was conceived based on the Lagos State Health Scheme law, which was to define or devise any alternative means for funding health care insurance. Permit me at this point to use the opportunity to thank uh, the Lashma Board and the management led by Permanent Secretary Manuela Zamba for their good work and to encourage them to continue to strive for a total coverage of universal health coverage for indigents and all Indigenous. In sustaining the initiative, the State Health Management Agency is raising additional funds to provide equitable access to quality health care services at affordable rates. The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayami, and other senior health officials encourage more people to key into the State Health Insurance Scheme for their own benefit. So one of the most important things is health care. So this uh, equity fund in the state budget is allocated to buying insurance, health insurance, for uh, Lagosian citizens, citizens who are residents in Lagos and qualify 
uh, we are able to identify them because we have a database uh, to measure people who fall below the um, threshold of uh, self-sustainability. And that database is what we use to access people and pay for their health insurance so that they can access health at any of our government facilities, our primary health care facilities, our general hospitals, or even if they choose to go to a private facility. So that we have in place to make sure that we create a social safety net for vulnerable members of society that at least they can get a basic health care package, which is what they require in terms of uh, hypertension, diabetes, fever, birth control, uh, antenatal care, immunization, nutrition, those and even simple and basic surgical procedures will be available to our citizens free of charge because it is paid for by government in the form of a, a health insurance and they can use that insurance to access health. Currently we have about 923,000 people covered under Eliraiku in Lagos State. About a third of that, which is like 334,000, are the vulnerable that we have been able to cover thus far. That's using the equity fund, which Mr. Governor Babadide Musola Sawolu gives to the agency, as well as the basic healthcare provision fund from the federal government, and then support from philanthropists and general members of the public. This event was set aside for us to be able to raise funds to cover an additional 200 to 300,000 people moving forward. It's a fundraiser to, uh, raising event so that we can get enough money to be able to pay for their own access to healthcare. You never know when something is going to hit you. You never know whether when the child is going to need care. But right now, what the Mr. Governor wants to do, and I think it's also from federal, is that every single citizen in Nigeria will have coverage, healthcare coverage. And this is us in Lagos saying everybody living in Lagos will have health coverage. That means they'll get access to quality care, they can afford it, and they have access. And don't forget they are vulnerable. Children are vulnerable, the elderly are vulnerable, the handicapped are vulnerable. So this is for them to get it free. And to get it free, we need help from individuals, from organizations, banks, to support Lashma, Ekosha, that's the social aspect of it, to support us so that we support them. Over 900,000 residents have registered under the Lagos State Health Insurance Scheme, and more people are encouraged to get on board to reduce out-of-pocket expenses. Now let's turn our attention to land administration. In making the process seamless, the Lagos State Government has deployed the EGIS tools to the Office of Surveyor General and the Land Bureau for effective land processing in the state. The State Head of Service, Mr. Olabode Aguru, who unveiled the equipment at the State Secretariat in Alao Saikeja, said the EGIS tools will reduce the time frame for processing applications for titles in Lagos State. Enterprise Geographic Information System tools, ICT devices and other equipment all aligned at Alausa Secretariat for effective automated land administration process in Lagos State. The State Head of Service, Olabo de Aguru, Special Advisor on EGIS and Urban Development, Surveyor General, and other senior state officials are here for the official handover of the equipment to the Office of the Surveyor General and Lands Bureau to kickstart the EGIS project. With this initiative, the EGIS office says it is ready to deliver electronic physical planning process for residents. We're about to launch the portal. And when we launch the portal, I see those who are outside and those of us who are on the inside, we need to interact with that portal. So uh, you cannot do that thing without you having to use EGIS tools like this. The people from the outside, we also thought about them because we are sure that some of them may not be able to afford a computer. That doesn't mean that they should be excluded. For the State Surveyor General, the tools will ensure that issues of land matters are addressed as soon as possible. But geographic information system itself deals with certain elements. So there's data capture, there's the data storage, 
there is retrieval, there is processing, there is analyzing, analysis, and there is presentation. All of us have been involved in the performance of one of these tasks or the other. But may I inform you that after capturing that data with some specialized tools by the surveyors, surveyors in the house, are you there? That's our own exclusive area, sir. So after capturing that data, every of the other ones that I've listed must, of essence, be performed by the tools that we're about to deploy today. Whereas GIS itself has two major components. There is the hardware, there is the software. One ride on the other. Just like the SAGI said, one is like witchcraft. That is the software. Because you won't see it. The likes of ArcMap, ArcGIS, those are proprietary softwares. And then the Omentum, that is very popular. Almost every person on the street now talks about Omentum. That is a bespoke application, or the customized one, as you may want to talk about it. That is the one that we have adopted in Lagos State. To cause an intervention in our land administration for not only effectiveness, but efficiency. The state head of service confirms that residents can now apply and process their land titles from the comfort of their homes. It's going to make life a lot easier. It's going to make life um, easy for them to process applications. because It's going to reduce the time frame in processing applications for title reducing it to a matter of days when the program starts. And from the benefit to the members of the public, they sit in the comfort of their homes and they can access the database and apply for title from the comfort of their home or office from anywhere in the world. The Lagos State Government says the provision of these EGIS equipment and deployment to the Office of Land Bureau and Surveyor General will help fast-track land permit applications and reduce human interface to the barest minimum. Finally on the program, Governor Babajide Sawalu says his administration will provide health palliatives for Lagos residents by subsidizing drugs to improve their well-being. He was speaking at the 2023 Community Day celebration. Let's find out how it went. It's the 2023 Community Day celebration at Police College Ikeja, Lagos. Representatives from all local government areas in the state are dressed alike for the occasion. <laughs> Governor Babajide Sawolu, his deputy Kadri Hamzat, some state cabinet members, traditional rulers all converge on Police College Ikeja for the annual ceremony. Self-help projects initiated across all local council development areas in the state is appreciated by the Special Advisor on Rural Development, Mr. Nuruddin Abaji, who also charged them to do more. The re-establishment of the Office of Rural Development in the Ministry of Local Government, Chieftaincy Affairs and Rural Development is a testament to the commitment of Mr. Babajide Olushala Sawolu's administration to ensuring the overall development of our communities. Through this office, government will be able to critically assess the needs of our rural communities and provide necessary support needed in this community, such as rural electrification, road constructions, and other amenities. An appeal for CDA constitutional review and a community secretariat is echoed by the Chairman of Community Development Advisory Council. Please permit me to remind Mr. Governor of some of the things we, we were promised during our last visit on 26 August 2022. On behalf of all CDAs, CDC and CDAC, let me reassure Mr. Governor of our loyalty and support for your administration. 
In this very difficult time, Governor Sawolu assures the people of Health Palliative, which will be rolled out very soon, to cushion the effect of high cost of living as a result of the economic challenges in the country. <laughs> The climax of the event was the presentation of four 18-seater buses to the first, second and third CDAs, Greenland Estate CDA in Etiosa East, Royal Estate CDA, Egbe Edimu LCDA and Elepe Royal Estate in Ikurudu Council Area, while the Best Rural Community Award went to Araromi CDA in Ibejileki LCDA. Araromi Community Development. Ibejileki only best rural area. Ah, what about that? Ori Yoni. Consolation prizes of 500,000 Naira cash was also given to other CDAs from 5th to 10th position for the significant step taking to create a veritable tool for infrastructure development in the rural communities. And that's the program for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to observe all traffic rules and laws in the state and help keep our environment conducive. Wishing you a Merry Christmas in advance, and as always, please stay safe. Till next time, it's bye for now.